previously, we looked at the comparator circuit where it is this op amp arranged in an open loop circuit. We'll know what that means in a little bit. But when you have some kind of input on the left side, this is the input, let's say a sine wave, the gain of this op amp is so large, the gain is pretty much infinity, that the moment you have any kind of difference between both of the inputs, V minus and V plus, the output will just shoot to infinity. But hang on a second, it's limited by the power supply. So the highest it can go is either positive 10 or negative 10, which is the power supply. But actually in real life, the input is like that. The output are, is so big, so big, the wave is like this, then all the way down to infinity, and then up again to infinity. It's huge, huge, but it's chopped off because it's limited by the maximum, which is the power supply, though, this 10 and 10, thankfully. But then you get this very ugly square wave, and sometimes we don't want that. Imagine if your volume knob, ah, the volume knob, the moment you on your, your device, it's just the maximum loudest it can go. Bang! Clipping away. Very distorted sound. I don't think you would like that. You would maybe want something more delicate. You turn the volume knob, the sound goes from small to loud. Maybe something like this. Where you have an input that is a bit too soft, you want it louder. So you crank the knob, turn up the volume knob, and it becomes a little louder. See the wave is louder. Previously, your amplitude here is 1. Now your amplitude here is 2. So this is what we call a gain of 2. 2 times louder. Now this is what we want. We don't want it to just, the moment you turn on, goes to infinity and then it clips. This is what we call clip. The cut off already because it is saturated. The gain is so high, we can't control it. How do we set up the op amp so that we can get this? We can control the gain. When you turn the knob, the volume knob, you can slowly make the sound louder, you can make the output, adjust it just what you want. Now, that trick is what we call feedback. So we are going to have to set up the op amp, but we need to know first, what is feedback? Now, feedback is a process where any fraction of the output is fed back into the input or combined back into the input. Now, what does that mean? Okay, let me give you an example of, say, positive feedback. Here we have an op amp, and this is called open loop, but I'm going to make it into a closed loop. How do I do that? I'm going to connect the output back into the input. And of course, there's some kind of device la, or just a wire, whatever it is, connect it back. Now, this is what we call a closed loop. I'm going to draw it down here. Close loop. No more open loop. And that way, there's some kind of feedback provided from the output back into the input. But we are not going to learn about positive feedback. The main thing we're going to focus in A levels is negative feedback. So I'm going to draw them over here. Now, negative feedback is different in that you take the output, but you send the voltage signal back into the negative input. Okay, the difference between positive feedback and negative feedback is you are feeding back into which input. So we are going to focus on the negative input more because positive is. We don't care about it. Okay, so how does this work? Remember I said what feedback is? A fraction of the output. So this output signal, one fraction of it. Let's call this, uh, let's, put, let's put a box here and call this beta. This beta, what is the beta? We're going to say beta is a feedback fraction. Feedback fraction. A small part of the output will go back into the op amps inverting input, which is the V minus down here, right? Now, when this fraction goes back into the amp, okay, we're just going to call this whole thing the input area, okay? So this one, now this output fraction is deducted or subtracted, is deducted or minus, lah. deducted or subtracted from the input. So you can think of it this way. La. Let's say you really like fried chicken. One friend come to you and say, hey, you like fried chicken? Ah? Hey, eat more, eat more. Ah, nah, here got one more bucket. Ah, take more. Eat more. Stuff into your mouth. Ah. That is positive feedback. You can just, where you want to go, voltage. Ah. Okay, then the output will feedback, feedback, feedback until you go crazy. And you will go ham. But negative feedback is a little bit different. It helps you to stabilize a bit. 
Oh, you like fried chicken? Ah? Okay, now you have a bit. Oh, but don't eat too much ah, after you get unhealthy. Hey, hey stop eating any. You're, you're going a little bit too crazy. So negative feedback will keep feeding back and say, hey, stabilize, stabilize, stabilize. Now, how does that exactly work? Well, got to come and see the next part of the video. Lah. But for definition, you need to know how to describe feedback and specifically uh, negative feedback, which is this sentence here. So you put both together though. Feedback is a process where a fraction of the output is fed or combined back or, and you mentioned, oh, and this output is deducted or subtracted from the input. So every time you feedback something from the output, you minus a bit, minus a bit, minus a bit. So you stabilize. Now, how does that look like in actual numbers? So if I connect something like this and I don't put anything here, no resistor, no factor, nothing. It's just plain old wire in back into the input. What I will get is, this op M will try to stabilize itself and say, hey, don't go to infinity, okay? Stay calm, keep the main, maintain the same input. So there's no gain, there's no increase in voltage. Ah. You come in 3.3, .3, you go out 3.3. .3. And this loop will help it to stabilize. And not suddenly go to infinity and clip. Because, why would you want to do that, okay? So we can change the input voltage. And we see that, we adjust a bit, 1.8. This one try to maintain 1.8. So it will keep feeding back to adjust to make sure that it will try to maintain the same as input. If this one has just a line, lah, no resistor, nothing. So this is what is the basic, the very, very basic idea of input. So you see ah, now 7 point, 0 0.75 by 7.49. Actually, it's a little bit off. So it will try its best to maintain the same, like 2.35, 2.4. It's a little bit different sometimes depending on what... Uh, voltage it is, but that's generally what it's trying to do. Stabilize. This is a no gain. You come in 4.8, go out 4.8. So, let's continue on thinking about how to think of feedback. So, we're going to look specifically at negative feedback. So, like I say, you're connecting the output, send a, a signal, a voltage signal back to the input. Okay, for this simplification purpose first, I'm going to draw input and output because too many legs. Okay, so we're going to do some derivation, but we need to set up the circuit first. And of course, you're going to have maybe some kind of a components that you can add in this middle part. And I'm going to say it has a factor, a feedback fraction. Feed B is the feedback fraction. So a fraction of the output will go back and minus from the input. So fraction. Okay, let's derive the equation for feedback, negative feedback. When you send a voltage signal back, here, V out, the signal, uh, signal means like, you know, if AC, then this is a signal that goes back in, long, okay, voltage signal. So if this one voltage come here, after the feedback fraction, it will be some fraction of the original already. So I can write it as beta times V out. Fraction lah. So if, if my output signal is 9 volt, a fraction of 1 over half, 1 over 1 over half, half, half of 9 volt, then here become 4.5 volt. Lo. It's just a fraction. Okay. So we need to decide what that fraction is depending on what setting it is. Okay. So B times V out, that's the fraction that goes back into the input. So you add together the original input and now you have a new, a feedback loop that comes back and say, eh, come add in some more. So at the end of the day, what happens is now you have a new kind of input where this one, I'm going to put red color. This is now the original input plus what came back in the loop. So that will be plus the fraction of output B, a fraction, times the output that came back. And that will be the total new input that comes in. Then the cycle continues. Okay, new input come in. Output, one bunch go back. New input go in. One bunch go back. So it's con constantly updating itself and being affected by the output. Okay, in a loop. It just keeps going, keeps going, keeps going. So let's let's say the gain G. Eh, right higher a bit. So let's, let's say the gain, gain of amplifier G equals to A0 just for derivation, derivation purposes. Now, this one has not come out in exams before, but it's good to know because it's also mentioned in the textbook. So maybe we asked to derive it. So who knows? Let's, let's, might as well know how to do this. So how do we know gain? This special gain, A0, is usually we say output 
over input. Right? How much out? How much in? How much larger did your signal become? But here we have something interesting. What actually going into the op amp is this. In a closed loop, it's a little bit different. Open loop gain, when we calculate it in a previous example, uh, previous unit, is just V out over V in. This is a closed, uh, sorry, open loop gain. But here you have a closed loop because you see a loop. There is some feedback going on. So we cannot just say V in anymore. We need to use this red color one that we just highlighted. Okay. We have to use V in plus B times V out. Ooh. But we want to get things back to the original form where it's just V out over V in. But now V in is a little bit more complicated because you have a feedback loop. So I'm going to do rearranging now. So let's see. I can multiply A0 times V in plus A0 B V out equals to V out. So I just took this whole bracket part and threw it on the other side, multiply both sides by the bracket, and I get this. Next, I'm going to factorize the V out. So I'll go A0, V in, equals to, I move this part to the other side and subtract. So that'll be V out times 1 minus A0, B. We're almost there. So now I do the final step. I rearrange these two so that I have V out over V in equals to A naught over 1 minus A naught times beta. There we go. Now this is more in the, the pattern of our gain. So this here is our closed loop gain. How we can calculate it if we know the gain of this system. Okay, now we're looking at the whole system already uh, because you got a feedback loop. It's not just the op amp anymore. But you have to think of the gain of the whole system, A0, and of course the feedback fraction, how much is actually coming back. This is what we call closed loop gain. Closed loop gain with feedback. Just remember, we are just changing one extra thing here where now here is the input, the original one, plus feedback a fraction of it from the output. All right. But this is for general feedback. We want negative feedback specifically. So we can say for negative feedback. Why do they call it negative feedback? Oh, what's the definition just now? Subtracted, right? For negative feedback, the output fraction is deducted or subtracted from the input. If you look at this equation here, what is coming in? V in plus beta V out. So actually, we want it to be V in plus a negative value of beta V out. Something like that. So that you have a minus of a negative number. Okay, so if I rewrite this thing, you want it to be input minus a fraction of output. So whatever fraction that is, uh, the absolute value of beta. So if you want that to be true, that means you have to say for negative feedback, I already wrote that up there. For negative feedback, beta must be negative. Then only you subtract. Ma. Okay, must be negative and you can say in the mathematical equation, beta less than zero. In here. Hmm? Okay, so remember, because uh, just now we say we add in, ma, that's why we use this plus sign here. But if you want it to be subtractive, your beta have to be negative law. So this beta have to be a negative value for it to be negative feedback. So like we saw earlier in the simulation, when you have this kind of stability, okay, someone keep telling you, hey, please don't simply explode to infinity, okay? Please regulate yourself. That is what we call feedback. And when you have this kind of thing, if you have a, a, a input of say 5.0, and the output, let's say, is 4.8. 4.8 will go back inside here. Then the opponent will say, eh, 4.8 is not same as 5.0. Adjust a bit, adjust a bit. So the feedback will keep going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth until the output is 5.0. And the op is happy. Send back 5.0 inside here. Oh, very good. Okay, it's balanced. So try to maintain the output at this level depending on the factor B. 
Okay, this one we are, we are saying just one, lah, okay, maintain at the same level. So that's one example of negative feedback. Now, why do we even bother to learn about negative feedback? What's so good about negative feedback? Well, I already show you the chicken, fried chicken example. It's good to have negative feedback. Even in our bodies, in biology, we have negative feedback mechanisms to make sure our body does not die, disintegrate. Just like we our body can have regulate itself to stay alive. So circuits also have negative feedback like this. So what are the benefits? Let's go through some of them that you need to know. The first benefit is that your op-amp will have increased bandwidth. Increase. Remember what bandwidth is? The amount of frequency, I mean the range of frequency that it can operate properly with no drop in gain. So if I draw a graph of gain against frequency, if your op M is open loop, means no feedback, ah, just open loop, your gain will probably look something like this. Here, no drop. But then when you go to higher frequency, oh, then your gain start to drop down. Why leh? Because your transistor, everything inside there, just cannot respond fast enough and just, it's just not, it cannot work properly. Okay, if you're curious to know why, go and Google search. Ah. This is like, at the limit of my knowledge, I also have to go and Google because a lot of transistors inside the op amp. But now, if you have a closed loop, oh, so this is open loop. When you have a closed loop, your frequency that you can operate at without loss of gain is actually much, much further. Then only you start to drop your gain. So this one is your cutoff frequency. Much bigger. So you can operate, your air can, you can send it a very good uh, high frequency and it still can work pretty well without dropping too much gain. So this is when you have a closed loop with a feedback. Closed loop means got feedback lah. Got one wire come out of V out, go back inside. That's one benefit. So your op, your op M can work in a larger frequency range. A second benefit is that it reduces, when you have a feedback, negative feedback, it reduces the or makes the gain smaller. So it reduces the infinite gain. It makes it smaller. What do I mean by that? Nah, normally, uh, if you have a graph of this input, the moment you send it into an op amp, its, it, its output will become infinity. But it's limited by the power supply, so it will become a square wave. Very big. So big. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Wrong direction, wrong direction. Big. <laughs> Down here. Then this way. And this way. And why is it square? Because actually, the wave is super, 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 super big. It should be off the chart. Lah. But you can only limit to here. So what you have is a resultant wave that looks like this. Chop off, chop off, chop off a bit. Chop here, chop there. Very choppy, choppy. But the actual amplitude of the wave is actually infinity. Very large. We don't want that all the time. We want more control. So, like this graph over here, now you can have actual proper sine wave. You can alter the amplitude of the wave and not just keep getting square wave the moment you turn on or off. On, off, on, off. It's just square wave. So, that's nice to do. You can have a volume knob now. Brightness or volume. Number three. What other benefits? There's less distortion of output. So less distortion of output. What does distortion mean? Ah? Distortion can be like a change in the shape of graph. Here's one example of a distortion. No? You see the shape here, the top got chopped off already. Leh. It's called clipping. Lah. It has clipped. So that is called distortion of the waveform. Sometimes we don't want that. We want to maintain the nice sine wave shape. We don't want all those square waves. So distortion. There are many other shapes and possible reasons for distortion, like some kind of noise in the system, in the circuit. Any small, small noise become very big. And a lot of problems. If you're curious to know what are the types of distortion that can happen to your signal, click on the link. Go find out more from the electronics coach right here. Okay, all in the this video description below. Okay, last one. The fourth, uh, one of the, the fourth benefit that you need to know is that when you have a negative feedback, you have greater stability in your op amp. Greater stability. You are more stable, you are more well regulated. In other words, if your output change and you don't want it to change, and suddenly it starts to change because of something, so you say if your output suddenly changes. This one is not a definition, it's just for you to know. 
uh, what it means, greater stability. If output changes, then the negative feedback. Oh, what will the negative feedback do? The negative feedback will affect the input. Because remember, it can send back. Ma. Negative feedback will affect the input to counter this change when it's not supposed to have changed. So for whatever reason, uh, accidentally changed la, or some noise caused the output to change, a spike in voltage, negative feedback will say, hey, wait, 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 you are supposed to be there, please go back there. Hey, why are you sleeping too much? Wake up, do your work. Hey, why are you not sleeping enough? Go and sleep. You know, it's trying to, it will make sure you keep it to whatever it's supposed to be, whatever you set it to be. So that's what it means by stability law in a circuit. It won't simply, simply just become infinity or zero or whatever that is. Right, so that is the main ideas of negative feedback. If you are curious to know why the the the, the op amp behaves like this, go and study more details. All about circuits, semiconductors, and negative feedback. Plenty of things to Google online, and you will know the reason why. But warning, this is like university level electronics, like electronic electrical engineering kind of stuff, really. So you might go in there and you'll be like, "What is going on?" So if you don't care about that, it's fine. Stay at A-levels. We just need to know these facts and recognize what is negative feedback. Okay? So in the next video, we're going to look at the two types of amplifiers that use this negative feedback. The inverting and the non-inverting amplifier. That's all for this video. I will see you in the next one.